There are few things that are more intimidating than opening up a new bit of software, looking at a blank screen, and wondering, how can I make this machine do what I want? So let me give you a few tips on how to get started with Igor Pro. There are other data analysis packages out there. Choose one, whatever you want, but in any case, choose one and learn how to do at least this minimal set of analyses. It will greatly help with the evaluation and presentation of data. Okay, so first, open up Igor Pro, and you'll see this window up here, down at the bottom of the screen, the command window, and the history window. All right, if we want to uh, get some data into Igor, well, we can open up a new table. Just say do it, and you'll get a new table there. And one easy way to enter data is simply to enter it into the table. So let's put some values in here. Make sure you hit enter after you put, type in the number to actually enter it into the table. All right. And now we've got data in a wave. All right. But wave zero isn't a very informative name. So let's rename that to absorbance because let's say this was absorbance data. So we go up here to the data menu, rename, we choose the wave we want to rename and we put in absorbance, the new name, click do it. And now our wave has a nice informative name, descriptive name for it, all right? Let's do a calculation. Let's say we want the mean and standard deviation. Really easy for that. Go to the statistics menu, wave stats, we choose absorbance as the wave, click do it, and we'll see that bam, the calculation has been done. The mean appears under VAVG, and the standard deviation appears here, V underscore SDEV. If you want to know what the other values are, you can just go to the help menu back here, and you'll see what all those other values are. Okay, physical chemists, we love to linearize data. So let's plot some data and fit it to a line. In this case, we're going to measure the equilibrium constant as a function of temperature and construct a Van Hoft plot. We know that we have six XY pairs of data, so let's make some waves with the appropriate lengths and name. All right, so let's, to make waves, we go to data, make waves. We're going to make all of these six rows long. There's going to be um, a temperature wave. Let's call that temp. There's going to be the equilibrium constant. Let's call it KEQ. Then eventually we're going to take the natural log of the equilibrium constant. Let's call it LN underscore K. And then we want the inverse temperature. We'll call that in INVT. Click do it. And we've made those waves. Note, don't use spaces and names, don't use odd characters. You can use an underscore, that's a good way to uh, give you some spacing, but not a space, right? Don't use a space. And start them with a, a letter, not a number. Okay, if we want to add those waves to the table, go up here, append, and I can just click on those with shift, grab them all, boom they're in the table. Oh, but they're not necessarily in the order I want, so let me hold down Option and move this one over here, move inverse temperature to the end. Good, now I've got those columns in the order I want. Now I could type in the numbers, but eh, that's not a lot of fun, right? If I have my data already in a table, then I can simply select it, copy and paste, Boom, there we have the numbers in. So you can copy, you can type numbers into a table, you can copy and paste into the table. If we want to do calculations, we can use the command line for that. In this case, we're going to have to calculate the natural log of the equilibrium constant, right? And so we can do that down here. We're going to assign the wave ln underscore k to the natural log of the wave keq. Hit enter, boom, you'll see that calculation went into the history, and up here we have the calculated values. We also need the inverse 
of the temperature. 1 over temp, again hit return, bam, we get the calculated values. If you'd like those to be formatted a little nicer, we can do that too. Right, just select a decimal with one value, or we can make them a scientific number with a couple of digits. Say we wanted a decimal with three digits, or a scientific number with two digits. That we can easily format. Now everything looks great. All the other digits are still in there, so Igor is going to do the calculations with all available digits. Don't worry about that. What about our plot? For a plot, we go up to Windows, New Graph, and we're going to plot the log of the equilibrium constant versus inverse temperature. Bam! There we go. Nice new plot, but make data points look like data points. Let me double click on the line and then I can very simply, I like blue, so I'm going to make this blue, but make sure data points look like data points by assigning them an appropriate marker. Okay, bam, now we've got data points. To make this look much better, I always like to put a little box around things with the mirror axis on the bottom a mirror to the bottom, a mirror to the left, that's good. But what we really have to have always is appropriate labels, right? So the left axis is the natural log of the equilibrium constant. And on the bottom axis, we've got inverse temperature. In inverse Kelvin units. That's important. Now we want to fit our data to a line. Again, that's very easy in Igor. We go up to analysis, curve fitting, and we're going to look for a linear function, a line, and we're going to do that for ln k versus 1 over t. Um, we're going to fit all the data. We don't have to make any guesses, but what we would like is to do error analysis on the slope and the intercept. We want to get 95% confidence level, and we'd like to add that in the text box to our graph. Bam! There we go. We can move it around. If we want to put some other annotation in there, that we can do very easily. We just add a text box with Van Hoff plot for ammonium carbamate equilibrium. There we go. Now, if we want to put a box around that, that we can do. We can even make that a certain color. Bam, and again, we can move it around. Excellent. So that's how we fit a line, we get also values for the intercept, for the slope, and their 95% confidence limit. I put them in the graph, and you'll see that they also appear right here in the history as well. Now, sometimes you'll take a lot more data points than that. Say you take the absorption spectrum of um, iodine in the visible on a UV vis spectrometer. You get hundreds or even thousands of points. You don't want to type those in. You don't want to cut and paste them. What you want to do is load them into Igor. So we can load waves, and if we do general text, that'll load in any kind of data that is um, comma or tab or space delimited. You'll notice that in the, the file here, I've actually put the name I want for the waves at the very tops of their columns. You could change those names down here if you wanted to. But I'm going to load those up. Now we could look at the data in a table. That wouldn't be too interesting. What we really want is a new graph of the absorbance versus lambda, the wavelength for iodine, I2. Bam! There we go. We've got a nice spectrum. We can draw that out here. Excellent. Again, you would want to label your axes, the wavelength on the bottom, 
in nanometers and on the left axis you have absorbance. Right, say we wanted to find where one of these peaks is. Well, we can expand by just dragging with our mouse there and there's one of our peaks. Now if we wanted to figure out where the top of this peak was, there are a couple of ways we could do that. We could show info and get some cursors and could place a cursor up here and go, well, that's kind of like 592.1, something like that. A more quantitative way, again, use fitting. It's really easy to do fitting in Igor and it's easy to do fitting of just a part of the data. So we could put cursors on either side of that peak and now we could do a fit to say a Gaussian function of the absorbance versus wavelength. We want to do that fit between the cursors and only between the cursors. We're not going to make any guesses. Uh, we don't have to in this case, but we also don't need the error analysis and we don't need to add a text box. So bam, there we go. There's the central uh, value of that fit, 592.102. Um, you'll see the fit appears there. Oh yes, and those numbers appear down here as well. And if we want to see what point number that is, we can move things around with the arrow keys. We can move our cursors around. That B cursor gets to uh, 592.1 at point two eight nine five. All right, I don't want those in our final presentation, so I'll move those off. And if I want to get rid of the fit, I can remove that as well. That's no problem. I then want to see the whole graph again, so let's auto scale it back out. And if I wanted to add annotation to show where that peak was, that's really easy to do. Let's add it as a tag this time. All right, and the text, we're going to say where that peak was, 592.102 nanometers. We don't want a frame in this case. We do want to position it at 0.2895. We want to make sure we've got an arrow. Bam, there we go. Move that around, and now we know where that peak was, and we can point right to it. All right. So there you go, a quick introduction to analysis with Igor.